Okay, so first of all, I saw this chart in a Nature article, and I wanted to see if I could recreate it in Excel. So I'll start by adding in an extra column here, because I need an extra series of data in my chart. And this whole column is just going to have the number one in it. Then I'll select these three columns here and go to insert and insert a stacked column chart. The first thing that I need to do is change all of the bars so that they are circles. So I'll go to insert and illustrations and shapes and then select the oval. And I'll hold down shift while drawing this so that it is a perfect circle. Then I'll change the shape outline to white because I want for there to be a small gap in between each of my circles. Then I'll change the shape fill to gray. And then control C to copy this. Select the green bars and control V to paste. Then I'll press control one to open up the formatting pane and I will change the fill so that instead of being stretched, it is stack and scale with. And now each of my circles represents one person. Then I need to do the same thing for the orange bars. So I'll select the circle again and change the fill so that it is orange. Then copy this shape and select the orange bars and control V to paste. Then I will change this again to be stack and scale width. Now I will change the gap width so that it is smaller. I will make it 50% so that these circles look more like actual circles. Then the next thing I need to do is add in the small vertical lines. So you'll see on the original chart here, each of these stacks has a small vertical line underneath it. And I'm going to recreate this using error bars. So I will add in an extra column here called error bars. And then you'll see that each of these stacks is grouped together in a clump of six. And so the first line and the sixth line need to be longer. So I'll make the first line one. And then the next four lines need to be shorter. So I'll make these 0 0.4 and then drag this down. And then the sixth line needs to be longer. So I will make this the number one again. Then I need this pattern to repeat. So I'll do equals and select the top value and enter and then double click to send this down. And the pattern repeats down the rest of the column. And this is what I want except for the last value here where I need it to be a shorter line. So I'm going to change the last value so it's 0 0.4. Now I can add in the actual error bars. So I'll move the chart back up here and select the blue squares and add in error bars. Then I will select these and I will change the fill to no fill so we can actually see the error bars and then select them using the drop down list. And I need to change this so that the direction is just going in the minus direction. End style is no cap. And then the error amount is custom and specify value. And I don't have any positive error values. I just want to change the negative error values to be the values in this column that I just made. And OK. And now I have all of the error bars being the lengths that I want them to be. I will just change the lines so that they are a bit wider and also make them a lighter gray. Now the next step is to add in the horizontal lines going along the bottom that join the longer lines together. And I'm going to do this by making a new series of data. And this is going to be a scatter chart, so it will have both X and Y values. And for the X values, 
I need for the data points to be in the middle of each of the six stacks. So for the first one, this is going to be 3.5 because that's in the middle of one and six. Then for all of the others, I can just take the first value and add six to it and then drag this down. And for the last value that needs to be on its own, I'll just put in the number 25. Then for the Y values, these all need to be zero because I want the lines to go along the bottom of the chart. Now I can actually add in this series of data. So I'll right click and go to select data and then add in a new series. The series name will be labels and then the series values need to be the Y values and then enter and OK and OK again. Now I need to right click and go to change chart type. And I will change this to a combo chart. And this messes everything up, so I need to change the extra series to be a stacked column. And then the men series also needs to be a stacked column. And then the labels needs to be a scatter and OK. Then I can right click again and go back to select data. And then we will take the labels series and edit this. And now we can add in the X values. So I'll select this column here and enter and OK and OK again. And now I have the blue dots spread out the way that I want them. Now I need to add in error bars for each of these dots. And so for this, I'll create a new column and I need to decide how long I want the error bars to be. So they all need to be 2.5 except for the last one where I don't actually want to have error bars. So I will make this zero. Then I'll select the blue dots and add in error bars. Then I will double click on the blue dots to open up the formatting pane and I will use the drop down list to select the Y error bars and I don't actually need these so I can just delete them and then I will use the drop down list again to select the X error bars and this time the direction will be in both directions the end style will be no cap and the error amount will be custom and specify value and for the positive error values I want to select this column here and then for the negative error values, I want to select this column here again and enter and OK. And now the error bars are the lengths that I want them to be. I will go and change this so the width of the line is one point and also change the color to a lighter gray so it matches the other lines. Then I'll select the blue dots and I will add in data labels. And then I will move the chart and select the data labels. And then the labels are going to be my like fake axes labels. So I'll change it to be value from cells and then select these labels here with the years and OK. Then I'll remove the Y value and the show leader lines and change the label position to below. Now I can delete the actual horizontal axes and also delete the vertical axes as well and delete the grid lines as I don't need those. Then I'll select the blue dots and because I don't actually want to be able to see these, I'll change the marker to be none. Now the rest of this is all just formatting to make it look more like the original chart. So I'll change the chart title to be this title here. Then we can take the legend and move it up to the top. And I can double click on the legend to delete the word extra and double click on the legend again to delete the word labels. 
Then we need to make all of the font black and I will make the chart title bold and I'll increase the font on the legend and then this needs to be moved up here and the chart title needs to be moved down. And then the labels at the bottom can also have a larger font. Then we'll just move the chart around a bit so everything looks like it's in the right place and also the circles look like actual circles instead of being squashed ovals. And also I will change the border so that it has no line to get rid of the border around the chart. And now I think that this looks reasonably close to the original chart. So in this video, I have shown you how to recreate this Nobel Prize chart in Excel. And that is everything.